What's up everyone, my name is Tatsai Gods, and I will be looking over Neith today, the Egyptian Weaver of Fate. So let's jump right in. So first of all, her difficulty is easy, so I agree, this is the easiest ADC and I highly suggest starting with Neith if you want to learn ADC. However, she is not the best at boxing, but she has a better team pre presence and brings quite a bit to the table if we look at her abilities. So first, she ha her buff is called Broken Weave. So a Broken Weave appears at the last location that each enemy god dies. The Broken Weaves give her abilities secondary effects when used on the Broken Weaves. These weaves last for one minute. So basically it's kind of like a deployable but they don't directly do anything to anyone. It's her abilities that are affected by these. So whenever they're used in the vicinity of a broken weave, they'll have secondary effects. So people can move through these and you'll probably see them all around the map, especially when people die, because that is how they're left. Either when an enemy god dies or when she uses her escape. So first we'll get into her um, main clear main lane clear which is called spirit arrow so neath fires a shot that passes through everything each enemy hit takes damage and is rooted if the spirit arrow hits a broken weave the weave detonates dealing an additional 100 percent of the damage and applying the root to all enemies in the area so this can go through walls it can go through anything that it hits and as you heard um, it will do 100% if it hits a broken weave. So what that means is instead of doing 90 damage, it'll do 180. So assuming that you, one, hit the spirit arrow on the target, and two, hit the broken weave. Which could be kind of challenging, but if it's done correctly, it'll be very, very devastating. Even hitting them in the vicinity of the broken weave will do that 90 damage, so it's very forgiving and the root is up to two seconds which could be very very important for boxing but the problem is she just doesn't hit hard enough so uh, and again that's uh, hundred percent of it is unmitigated so obviously it won't do 180 damage like full but it'll do something similar to that and it also will root the enemies very important to note and one of her best abilities Next is Unravel. So Neath neatly unravels the world weaves, damaging all enemies in the dark in the target area, reducing their attack speed and a healing Neath for each enemy hit up to three. Any broken weaves in the area are removed, healing Neath an additional amount. So basically, what this means is one, it will do damage; two, it'll heal; and three, will give an attack speed debuff. So the debuff can last up to 6 seconds and is 30%, which is fairly large, <clears throat> and for quite a long time as well, um, the base time being 2 seconds. So if you can hit your spear arrow, which is a 2 second root, plus hit your unravel, already you're doing tons and tons of stuff, especially if this is in a team fight. If you root even just 2 enemy team me members, you're just helping your team out so much that... 1.2 seconds or 2 seconds, how many ever it is, just does a lot for your team. And then the, the debuff of attack speed is massive, especially on Hunters. Very, very useful. And as well, it gives her huge heals. Um, so this is why you might want to build Heartseeker on Neath. That's what I like to do. Um, her heal. Her heal does huge amounts. So 80 times 3. That's like 240 right off the bat great great heal and <clears throat> if you actually use it on a weave it will use up the weave but it'll do additional healing so instead of doing 80 it will heal you 160 very useful I would probably use that over healing whatever but um, <clears throat> this can only heal herself right and it will damage everyone in the circle However, it will only heal off of three enemies, and it will take priority of the um, of the broken weave over any other target. So if there's four people in the vicinity and there's one broken weave, it will hit two people in the vicinity plus the broken weave, which will give you an additional, say, 160 over 
one, one two over 80 so that means that it will do 160 plus 160 instead of just 80 times 3 so that's great great healing very very useful um, three backflip so this is uh, her main escape you wouldn't really use this for initiation because of its long animation you can really really uh, predict what where she's gonna land and um, not the most useful initiation you can use it I would just use it to close the gap not actually initiate though uh, that's as, as far as that goes uh, the slow is 25% uh, and the damage goes up to 220 not really focusing on the damage more the uh, the slow so this it slows 25% for 4.5 seconds very quite long uh, not quite as long as this debuff and the backflip will um, it will consume well it'll make a broken weave first so once you backflip you make a broken weave and then when you make that broken weave um, it will if you backflip again while the broken weave from the first backflip is up then that will basically consume the broken weave so that'll limit the amount of broken weaves you have so you can have up to six on the map because each well depends on how many times they die really so every time an enemy god dies you get a broken weave and then plus the backflip so you can have up to five for the enemy gods and then one backflip so that's six but that's all dependent on the one minute so you can have even more if they die a bunch of times within one minute but that's not very likely and lastly is her ult and this is actually not really um, affected by broken weave which is I think before it used to get affected by the broken weave but they removed that from the game so Neath charges up and fires an arrow across the world seeking its target through obstacles enemy gods take damage and are stunned the arrow can be fired quicker for diminished results so basically what that means is you can fire it faster but it'll do less damage instead of 490 maybe it'll do like uh, 350 so basically what this ultimate does is gives her all her like what Neath is basically gives her her global presence and why she could be used in so many roles um, it stuns the enemy for about up to 1.5 seconds can be body blocked by enemy gods so if you're targeting someone and they happen to stand right in front of the other person because there's a target indicator when you get targeted by the world world weaver it you can actually body block it so if they're standing next to someone or there's a lot of traffic in the area you you probably don't really want to aim as long as you get that world weaver out because you probably won't hit your target especially if it's a team fight um, so yes it can be cancelled earlier but it will deal less damage and it is again no effect on weaves so let's go ahead and jump into jungle practice here mm. So starting off, you'll want to start with your blue, blue stone pendant, tier 1 of Heartseeker, and 1 healing potion. That will consume all your funds, so you'll have nothing left. Um, and then eventually you'll want to be to the point where you have this, the full Heartseeker, Aussie, Warrior Tabby, Executioner, and finish off with Rage and then sell bluestone pendant for deathbringer so what does this build do in comparison to the devo gloves so what the devo gloves do is basically it's for auto attack centered characters unlike neath neath is one of your only um, ability powered hunters really she's very very reliant on her kit unlike a lot of the hunters that could just uh, 0 to 100 to 0 you without even using their kit basically 
she's very reliant on this stuff uh, you know the attack speed debuffs the roots the slows the stuns she just has great great CC every single one of her abilities does CC and she's very reliant on it so just head into the laning phase right now just gonna assume that um, just started and we only have this stuff so I'm gonna walk out to lane. You'll want to have your spirit arrow leveled up first, and then just simply clear the lane like that. And then just keep hitting the minions. Try getting the last hits. Of course, I'm not really trying, but in the circumstance where you're trying to get him, then you'll probably want to do that. Um, so just waiting for the next wave here. You just see she does so much damage to the wave, right? And she's uh, favored by many of the newer players because of that. It's just the simplicity of her kit. And how fast she really cleans, clears the lane and can kill people. So next, um, you'll probably want to, if you're against uh, a tank like Sobek, you'll probably want to pick up Backflip. But uh, some, most of the time you'll probably want to pick up Unravel, which is your main heal. Because it'll do damage on the whole wave. It's very easy to aim. You don't even have to think about it. And then pick up that flip third, probably. Uh, so what this does is just unlocks your whole kit so you have no chance of being taken out. So usually sometimes if you have like full mana, what you might want to try doing is just putting your weave out there and then just hitting the whole weave with it because they'll take 200% of your um, 200% of your spirit arrow damage and it'll be an easy clear very easy pickings for you against your solo laner um, of course if you are getting low on mana you might not want to use this uh, so yeah be careful with using mana especially on Neath but bluestone pendant is a little more uh, forgiving when it comes to that so see there, I was only able, or I was able to clear the whole wave with uh, only missing one minion, and I'm I was only level four. So, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. So I'm just gonna show you uh, what the difference really is between the heals. See if I could uh, draw aggro on these. No, Alright. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try taking as much damage as I can from the harpies and kind of showing you what it's like from 3 stacks of Heart Seeker to 50 stacks of Heart Seeker. Because the amount that you get healed for is so much different when you have full stacks and this is why she's so good with her heart seekers because she does so much damage and then with that damage she could just heal right back up with her two which is built in lifesteal basically because you damage the, the uh, opponent and then and then you damage the or you damage the opponent and then you get healed back so with that Um, let's see. So, I was able to heal off like 27, 28, 27. So, that's what we're talking about right now. And then, if we go and just heal off of our, one of our broken weaves, this is what a broken weave looks like up close. We will heal for 55 health. So, that's basically double, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, 55 instead of like 27, even more than uh, 2, so very, very good. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up stacks here, be right back. 
Alright guys, I'm back here with my 50 stacks of Heartseeker and I'm just going to take some damage again from the Harpies. Of course, this observation isn't going to be the best since I was about level 5 or 6 when I took um, the original test of having zero, like 3 stacks from Heartseeker. But um, I tried keeping it as, you know, like realistic as possible I would suppose. And um, I did not rank up my unravel, so we'll see the differences. So this is without a weave. I'm going to heal myself quite, not really that much, but if we take a look with our weave, we'll probably do, probably do a little bit more. Uh, just waiting for these harpies to respawn now. Okay. And here's the second test. Much. I, I feel like we did much more. Uh, let's see. 22 health. 22 health. And. 22 health. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Let's just uh, continue our build here. Picking up Warrior Tabby is where you'll really see the difference. Um, gonna go ahead and try challenging the Harpies again. Oops. Probably wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, that's fine. So standing here. Uh, last time, I believe I healed myself for 22 damage, 22 HP each. Uh, we'll see how it does this time. Okay, and I'm gonna unravel. That was about half of the damage I took. 28, 28. Quite a bit. Very, like, good, a good amount. A little different. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now and switch to the full build at level 20. And let's see how much this will heal for now that I leveled it all up. So the heal will do uh, just about over 100 without a weave and then just over 200 with a weave. So let's go ahead and challenge Robot. Oh. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that that just kind of shows you how strong Neath is. I actually didn't know that I would kill him. Okay, let's try to heal. Decent damage, 374. Basically dead. Just gonna auto attack him. Um, I mean, that just kind of shows you how strong Neath is. <laughs> Um, if you get her to full build, uh, full damage, then she'll just more or less be not unstoppable, but very, very hard to stop. Uh, we'll see how much damage I'll take, because I should be able to heal up a little bit, maybe around 300 health, something like that. But um, looking at Mar our health bar here, you can see just how low her HP is, and that's because of her unravel ability. It gives her a lot of utility, and um, like the amount of HP she can heal in the short time she can, uh, it's more or less kind of broken because she has that additional health deal, right? So okay, <laughs> so that that does a lot more. Uh, healed for 115 off of each harpy. So that's very, very good, uh, to say the least. So, yeah. Yeah, she does so much damage. Uh, the only thing is, as you can see down here, our attack speed is low compared to an Uller who, if built correctly, can reach like 2.14. Um, her attack speed is very, not very low, but low enough that you can see a difference. So I'm gonna go, 
Um, let's see here how much da or how much health I will get with our broken weave here. Oh wow, I healed myself full. <laughs> uh, let's see, 115, 114, and 199. So you can see just how much that heal does. It's crazy. Very, very good. Um, so, aside from that, let's get into her final ability, the ultimate. So this is what it kind of looks like. So you, uh, you could see people. There's no other gods on this map except for me and Ra. So it'll kind of uh, jump to Ra here and it will follow him through walls, through obstacles, as long as you can see him. Let's uh, see if we go over here. Okay, we can still see him. Uh, I pr probably jungle practice is designed so that you could see Ra all the time. Uh, I don't believe this is the case with Neath in an actual conquest match. If you don't have line of sight of them, then you can't shoot them. But since it's conquest, I will be able to shoot him. Um, I, and as well, I think since we're so far away, I don't think I'll be able to hit him. It'll probably just say that he's immune. So yeah, you get down into this, um, and people can still hit you here. So don't think you're immune or anything like that. You'll take tons of damage. People can stun you. They can stun you out of this little position right now. Um, other things like a, a silence will take you out of it, but stuff like a slow or other types of CC like that will not. So for an example, let's try uh, see. I can shoot him through the wall like that. Oh, it will kill him. So I just shot it through the wall and hit raw. Um, if I had a stronger target, then it will see that it it stunned him for like what 1.5 seconds. Um, I mean, you could use this in a close quarter combat boxing thing, boxing uh, kind of situation, but you're losing out on a lot of your uh, attacks, right? You'll be taking more time out of attacking to charge up this ult, so definitely not worth it. Uh, some things you should be careful for is using up your weave when uh, using unravel. Try not using unravel on the weave so that you could use it for your spirit arrow to do additional damage. Uh, let's see if I could do a lot of damage. On that. Okay. That was too much damage. Okay. Oh, he won't even chase. That's fine. Um, basically, you could line it up so that... Uh, oh, wow. I could line it up right there. So, you, so as you can see, I have multiple Wii's right now. I have one. Uh, and that's the effect that happens when you like blow it up. And it'll do lots and lots of damage, so that's, that's great. You move like a jaguar. Uh. Thank you, driver. That's the target indicator, and all you do is just aim over it, and he's dead. Very, very simple character. If you have not yet tried Neath, but want to uh, try her, you know, or learn ADC, highly recommend Neath. Uh, try this build uh, if you haven't already. Her, she's very, very good with this. Her, if you think her heal was good before, it is amazing with this build. And um, if you die in later stages of the game when you're level 20, just switch this out for a Blood Forge. This will give you the additional um, physical power and physical life steal that you need to survive the end game, and it won't sacrifice your attack speed. So, just some stuff to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, please drop a like, favorite, and subscribe.